guys, welcome to another episode of Live Your Legacy Podcast. I'm here with uh, Josue Peña, who is a serial entrepreneur, a social media influencer, and an expert when it comes to social media marketing, branding, creating digital products. Um, I'm honored just to be here because he is very successful, very intelligent, and at the same time, he's Latino, so you know, it hit different when we yes. connected, and <laughs> I'm super excited just to get started with this episode. So, Josue, um, welcome to the episode. Good to have you here. I appreciate it, man. It's always an honor being invited as a guest, so thank you so much for this opportunity, and I'm looking forward to just sharing, you know, story and, you know, hopefully helping uh, some people uh, that are watching this, so yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, Josue, why don't you go ahead and uh, we can start off just by sharing a little bit about your background, your story. I know that you're from Dominican Republic. You yep. didn't come from the best place. Um, like most successful people, you had to create it, right? How was how's your story? How does that tie into what you do now? And um, we'll kind of take it from there. Yeah. So, born and raised in the Dominican Republic. Today, I'm 30. Um, I moved out of DR when I was 22. So, most of my life... I've lived it over there. I moved to the United States with a student visa into Indiana in the middle of nowhere. Literally a pig, corn, fat cow, and a fat girl was my neighbor. So it was, it was a very tough you know, situation to be in. And it was winter when I moved uh, to Indiana. So I had to shovel snow, went from Caribbean sun to shoveling snow. It was a very interesting, let's say transition. Very drastic. Yeah. Drastic transition. But um, the reason why I did it was because I knew that the opportunity that I had in the Dominican Republic was capped, right? Nobody that I knew in DR had what I wanted to have. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to take a chance. All I wanted to really become was to become a professional soccer player. That is what I started social media. You would have been the first professional soccer player from DR that I yeah. know. Yeah, so um, I, there's 10. a couple, there's a couple, there's a couple. But yeah, I, that, that was my dream. I was, I was the Dominican Messi. That's what I used to call myself. What? Yeah, Sick. so... Um, <clears throat> I started in social media in 2013, around that time, for that goal. In end of 2014, beginning of 2015, I moved to Indiana to pursue that dream, right? And I ended up playing semi-pro against a lot of professional teams in the United States. Um, uh, the team used to be called FC Indiana. We used to go to Indianapolis and Chicago and Dallas and New York. And, like, we used to travel all over. And we used to play. Um, and it was fun. It was fun, but a lot of sacrifices. I remember training three, four hours a day, every single day, nonstop. I was in the best shape of my life. Today, I'm fat compared to how I was before. I looked like Cristiano Ronaldo, like shredded to the bone. And, um, and then in 2016, I get injured. Um, and the time that I was dedicating towards football, because it's football, it's not called soccer, okay? Um, and I started dedicating towards growing my social media more and focusing on business, reading books and stuff like that. And then I remember September 13th, 2016 was my first paying client for $3,500 a month. His name was Tim, I think it was Tim Gu or something. He was like the owner of an insurance company and he wanted to grow his Instagram account. And because I've grown millions of followers by that point on Instagram, I was able to help him do that. Wait, wait, so I might have skipped something here. Okay. You went from a professional soccer, by the way, it's soccer. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is football. It is foot and ball, okay? Not egg ball, what you guys call it, like in the, in the United States, is egg ball. It looks like an egg, it's thrown, and every now and then you kick it with a foot. That's called egg ball. It's not called football. You call it whatever you want, except for football. Do you know where this, <laughs> the term soccer comes from? I don't. Me neither. It's so, Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's football is, you kick it, there's a ball, and you kick it with the foot. So you went from <laughs> playing professional football, which is very interesting. You have, you know, the athletic performance, the training, the discipline, the mindset of that. Yep. Um, but how did you get into the game of social media? So in 2013, like back when I lived in DR, I was studying to become an electromechanical engineer. Okay. That's what I was, went to college for. And my cousin, um, I remember he used to paint. So like drawing paintings and he would post the pictures on Instagram. And at the time he got uh, hired by a guy in Saudi Arabia or Dubai or something that contacted through Instagram, saw his work and he was paying him to paint. Like he was paying him like 500 to $700 a month. Mind you, my cousin at the time is like 14 years old or 15 years old. I'm like, what? You're making 500 to $700 a month at 14, 15 years old painting things and posting them on Instagram? That's crazy. So I'm like, okay, maybe I can do the same with uh, football or soccer, right? And I started posting content on social media, started posting content on YouTube. Um, the channel's still up. It's called Elation Fitness and Elation Football. 
the videos are still up there. So I would go out, train um, every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. I would train every day after 6 p.m. when I got out of uh, college. And I will train by myself a lot of times. I will film myself, I will edit the videos, and I will post them. So that's what I started doing over and over and over every single week religiously. And that's how I started the social media game. Obviously, throughout the process, I learned. Um, I started the algorithm. I started hashtags. I saw videos. I bought courses. I, bought, I, I did a lot of different things to grow faster on social media when, at the time, it was, it was not cool. I yeah. was like, the, the people would see me in, in college um, and I would go to class and at the time my channel would used to be called JP Destro and we were like, Oh, JP Destro coming into class. Oh, JP Destro. And like, they will make fun of it. Um, I didn't care. It was like, whatever. Um, now today it's, it's a, it's a different, you know, <laughs> thing. But, um, at the time that was, that's how it started. That's how it happened. And, uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's phenomenal. So why don't you share with the audience? Um, what, what would you say is like your biggest accomplishment to date? My biggest accomplishment to date, oh man, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's tough. So I've, th thank God I've been able to be at the top and be at the bottom, lose it all, and then build it back up. So um, in 2018, I was 25 at the time, and I made my very first million before I turned 25. So I turned 25 in September. Before September, I made the very first million uh, dollars that I ever made. And obviously, as a young 25-year-old, that doesn't know what he's doing. Um, I started blowing money. You know, I started partying. I came to Miami. I did this, and you know, and it wasn't smart. Um, and I felt top of the world. Now, 2019 comes, and again, I'm still top of the world. I'm making tons of money, all profit, very little expensive. You know, it, it was going well. And then um, at the time, I started to try to become what you said at the beginning, which I don't consider myself a serial entrepreneur. I started to try to become a serial well, entrepreneur. Honest. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, oh, I have these 10 different businesses and it's an ego thing. Um, so I started doing that and none of them worked. I put a lot of money into them, a lot of effort into them. So that went wrong. And then at the same time, I had a big deal with a big influencer, which I'm not gonna name, um, that I made him a lot of money, <laughs> but then he screwed me over a deal. It was $100,000 a month for 12 months plus a 20% profit share. That was the contract. And he signed it, he did it, and then he pulled out after I had all the vendors and everything, but he already had the IP and he already had all the information that he needed. And uh, I didn't protect myself correctly at the time and I got screwed over. <coughs> and with a huge bill from all the vendors and people that I signed contract with to be able to deliver to this client. So that happened and that put me in a very, very tough spot. That was 2019, beginning like April 2019. By August of that same year, I was working uh, as a cashier in a gas station here in Miami. In uh, 2019? In 2019. Jesus. That's so sick. like by September 2018, I made my very first million. Less than one year later, I was pumping $10 on 20. I was going to ask you, I think you skipped the good <laughs> part of the come up story. You doing gas stations with that happened after you made your first million, yep. which is, it, it must've been a huge hit, like it, mentally, like yeah. how do you, how do you get up from, you know, going from a quote unquote <clears throat> first million millionaire, top of the world, best lifestyle. And then you get screwed over unprecedented events. Something happens that just yeah. knocks you off your feet. Now you're at a freaking gas station. By the way, I admire the humility <laughs> and just like doing whatever it takes. We just yeah. filmed an episode about in Spanish talking about doing whatever it takes. So you're Correct. a living example of that. And I love Yeah. That. So for me, it was at the time it was I mean, it was tough because like as a man, you're like your identity, your ego, your manhood, everything is tied up to like the success that you have publicly. And it was very tough because also um, I felt that I was not worthy or not whatever. And um, the only thing that kept me going at the time was me knowing that I didn't have another choice. So my only other option, right? Because I had a student visa in, in here. It was through, that thing was through an, uh, something called OPT or optical practical training, I think it's called. So my other only option was to go back to the Dominican Republic to work as an engineer, right? Electrical engineer in the Caribbean sun, putting pipes, electrical wire in construction. That's what I was doing. And I was making $350 a month as a graduated electrical engineer. So my option was cashier gas station <clears throat> in the United States, the greatest country in the world, or electrical engineer making 350 bucks a month. I'm like, I'm gonna take my bets and um, the chance of me succeeding, and this is not my, the end of my story, and me working in a gas station is not the end of it, is highly likely because I'm here, so I'm just gonna keep doing that. 
And um, I'm just, I'm a very stubborn person, I would say. Some people call it obsessed. I call it perseverance, right? Um, so it's like when I set myself to do something, I do it no matter what, um, even if it hurts and even whatever happens. Same thing happened in soccer. I broke this ankle when I was 15. I broke this ankle when I was 19. My teeth in the front don't have sensitivity because I got kicked back. My back is, is fucked up because of soccer and this knee too. And throughout this entire time, and it also like broke this big toe. That was the, the injury I had in 2016 that then I transitioned to business. But point is that I've had a lot of setbacks throughout anything that I do in life. And every single time I'm like, I'm just gonna do it anyways, right? I'm gonna do what's required because this is the end goal I want. And I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get there. Doesn't matter what, it's like I have no other choice. So for me, that was that in the gas station. And uh, it was hard, man, but it was hard. And I was working in the gas station as a cashier during COVID. So, and then in the back of the gas station, there was a, a big building of a rehab center, like rehab for like drugs and different things like that. So you, every day you will see random people walking in their underwear, barefoot, walking to the gas station, asking you for a phone. And you can't give them a phone. Right. Because like they're in the rehab. <laughs> you know? call their dealers right <laughs> away. <laughs> Correct. It's like, you're like, and then like, you're having to deal with that while at the same time, you're trying to help this old grandma buy their lotto. And then at the same time, you're trying to help this guy buy Coke. And then uh, this guy put gas in, in pump 20. Let me ask you a question. How, how was your identity at that point, right? Because you're emerging to an environment where, I mean, you're with homeless people, drug addicts, people trying to buy the lotto very low vibrational energy Correct. people like how did you stay high i didn't really i didn't no i'm i will i'll be lying if i told you i did so for me like i said um the business went took a nosedive like horrible those dives. the one thing and uh, that i did have at the time was also employees and what i would do is i would wake up at 5 a.m because i had to enter my shift at like at 6 or before 6 a.m and then i would w work standing up cleaning toilets cashier filling the fridge, et cetera, in the gas station up until 3 p.m., 2 to 3 p.m. And then after that, I would then try to build the business back up, right? And then every month I would do, I don't know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a month. But that was like literally just to pay the employees. So I was making no money. Like I was making literally no money um, or very little. So I was like trying to figure this out all at once, um, all at the same time. But for me, it was, it was never... Uh, an option of going back and quitting because I don't have an option. I don't have a fall, fallback plan. I don't have rich parents that can just bail me out, right? I don't have any of that. So for me, it was like, okay, I need to figure this out. I need to push through this thing. And eventually this is not going to be my story. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know this is not going to be the end of my story. So that's what happened. And then um, 2020 comes, COVID happens. I think it's all BS, like we all know today, right? At the Agreed. beginning, at the, at the time, I was like, I like, oh, work a mask. I'm like, why, why do we have to wear a damn mask? Like, whatever. Anyways, so <laughs> dealing with that and dealing with like all these crazy people that are now scared, so it's even worse. Um, and what ended up happening was um, COVID, the entire country in the Dominican Republic shuts down too. So I can't even travel either. I can't, I can't do anything. Um, so my grandfather passed away from COVID mm. in July, Ju that. June, July, something like that. And I had a fiance at the time, long distance, again, COVID, you can't travel anywhere. And then uh, ends the relationship a week later or something like that. So I was in the worst mm. point of my life. My face was full of pimples, pimples mm. like, like breaking out. Anxiety, stress. Yeah, anxiety, anxiety stress. I wasn't sleeping well. I was like <clears throat> overweight too. It was a very, and this very- this while you're working at the gas station? Yeah, working at a gas station. So this entire, you know, all that thing happened um, while I'm trying to build this thing you know, build this business back up and whatever. And what got me out of that situation was the network. And what I mean by this is in 2020 in July, a couple of friends moved to Sunny Isles, Porsche Design Tower. I don't know if you've been to that building or know the building. It Beautiful. is- Beautiful, I want to move in that area in Sunny Isles. Sophisticated, luxurious, on the water, on the beach, high-end individuals. That's, Correct. That's where we're going. Right? Exactly, and it's, it is absolutely insane. Like you have a car elevator, meaning, on the 30th floor, yeah. you have your Bugatti parked right there on your Kevin elevator. Kevin Tobias. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out yeah. to Kevin Tobias. Exactly. So it's, it's, that's, that's the building. So uh, I had a couple of friends who moved in there. It was a 3-3, three, three, right? Three bedroom, three bathroom. And there were only two of them. And uh, because of the good network and the goodwill and being able to help people correctly with my skill set, which was Instagram and making sales on Instagram and social media, um, they came in and said, hey, listen, like you're a cool dude. Like, why did you move in? 
I'm like, and literally I was like, I had $15,000 saved up like from the last year. So you're working at a gas station, you have 15K saved up? Saved up, yeah. Cause I, it, I was like literally saving, like I was living in a little tiny closet. All I did every day was just go to the gas station, come back, go to the gas station, come back. That, that's all Very I did. frugal and- Fru I didn't spend money on it. Like Chipotle was my thing or Subway. Like that was one meal a day, that's all I ate. Um, and it was very frugal, I didn't spend pretty much any money. And then they say, hey, listen, why don't you move in and uh, you'll figure it out. Like just send you the environment that's gonna help you. That was end of July. I'm like, man. And he's like, but you gotta pay rent. I'm like, man, rent is five grand a month. Utilities, food, et cetera, is probably gonna be like six, 6,500. I have $15,000 saved up in the bank. I got two and a half months worth of living. Now, I made a million, multiple million, like uh, $1.4 million by that point, right? I'm like, okay, you know what? $15,000 is not a lot of money. What's the worst that can happen? I'm just gonna go back to the same spot I'm in right now. Fuck it. And I did it. And I'm glad I did because changing the environment from where I was, low vibration, like being humiliated, dealing with, you know, people that are like not in the right mindset, yeah. um, that surrounding affects you significantly. And taking myself out of that equation and taking a big risk, because mind you, I don't know what's gonna happen, right? I move into Porsche Design Tower, Dude, Maluma is my neighbor. I'm working out with Maluma and a billionaire. I think Messi has a place there Messi, too. Messi, like Messi was, so this was our apartment. Messi was the one right above us. I never saw him, but I know that he was, Sick. yeah. But it was like, it was crazy. And the first month I remember like changing the environment and me being able to focus back on what I was good at, AKA my skills and selling and Instagram and social media. I made $89,000 on that August on August, 2020. Okay, so you're going from making 10 to 15, breaking even, paying the employees. Yeah, making no money, basically. At the gas station, that was like your source of income to pay Correct. for your immediate needs and bills. And then you get this opportunity in that same month, you made the risk. And then how much did you make? $89,000. $89,000 in one month doing the marketing for them. Correct, Mar marketing um, on social media, selling through Instagram, doing the exact same thing I was doing back in 2018. I just said, listen, I just gotta go back to what I know worked and what I'm good at and what people know me for, right? And what I have all these testimonials for. I just went back there. Let me ask you a question. And what services were you providing for them? Yeah. Do you, um, because maybe you can educate me in the yeah, audience. You own a social network, different memes or pages. Like, can you give me a little bit of um, background on that? Yeah, so my claim to fame in 2016 I owned a bunch of different pages, all the way from like art pages to fitness pages to basketball. The weirdest page I owned was like selling mini pigs or like, a, you know, so I, I owned a bunch of different pages and all I was doing was just growing in traffic, growing, 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 growing. I knew how to trigger the Instagram algorithm to make something go viral. Back then you can buy like 5,000 views and the video will automatically trigger to go viral and you can get like a million views on that video organically. So there was a lot of like little things like that. Obviously throughout the years, the algorithm has changed significantly, but that's, that's what I was doing. That was like what I became really, really good at. So back then in 2019, by that point, I had obviously a bunch of pages and a big network. And behind that, an even bigger network of other pages that I knew the owners because of what I had. And then on the other side, I had these business owners that wanted to market their products and sell more. So all I did was just become the bridge, mm -hmm. you know? So um, that's, that was how I did it really, really well and capitalized on that opportunity and became kind of like the go-to person in the internet marketing community, in the ClickFunnels community. And that's why today we have like testimonials from Lady Boss and Alex Becker and like work with Dan Locke and Russell and like all these people. So that's, that's how that happened. And obviously throughout that period, I became good at selling, right? Selling through Instagram, because like these guys just want to market their products because they already have a sales process. But I was seeing their sales process, I'm like, huh, I'm learning and I'm seeing the similarities between this client, this client, this client, this client, even though they're in completely separate niches. So that's what I learned very well. So 2019 hits and I'm like, okay, listen, I can connect these business owners to these marketing systems and sales systems, pair them up and I got paid for that. So that's what I did very well. And then to this day, this is what I do. It's like, I just help business owners sell more of the products and services through Instagram, through marketing and sales systems um, that we create for them. So that's, that's what we've become really, really good at. That's phenomenal, man. And in marketing right now, I feel like business owners need that more than ever because they may have a good product service, but how do they actually get the right traffic? Yep. What would you see are, are 
the top strategies for business owners to market themselves, position themselves intelligently online on social media, knowing that you've built a social media empire, you've built with you know big names in the industry, what would you say maybe three to five key strategies for business owners when stepping into the platform they want to grow their audience? I would say number one is market research. So what I did that helped me a lot was take a very like engineer approach to, to what I did. Or it's like, okay, like I'm trying all these different things, it's not working, like something's not working. So I need to like step, take a step back, actually think, and like try to like figure things out step by step. So step number one would be market research, meaning who is the top dog in your industry and who are the 20, 30, 40, 50 different influencers and people that are in your space. See their content they're posting and see what's called BPPs or best performing posts. These are posts that have above average engagement, right? So let's just say, for example, you're in fitness. Now, um, there's a bunch of different fitness ways. Like there's like the carnivore diet and the vegan and the, the whatever, you know? So like just find your sub niche, focus on there and see what content performs the best on that specific kind of like vertical um, and then just replicate it, right? So if you see something, if you see an influencer, they're posting content and they're getting 10,000 views a video and then they post one and they're getting on that video 100,000 views, what are you gonna do? Just replicate the damn thing. Just literally copy it, like whatever you wanna call it. Just replicate it in your own way. And that's it, that's it if you are a personal brand. Now, if you own like to say a theme page or a business page, all you really gotta do is you can just reshare that same content and credit the original creator. The original creator is gonna love you because you're pushing traffic back to them and you're crediting them. And then your audience is also gonna grow because they're seeing you as a source of information like Google. Google doesn't own any content, but they're the source of the information where people go to for the specific thing. So that's what I um, would recommend like step one, market research and knowing exactly what content to create. And the most important thing is like typically the hooks and the topics of the videos that you're creating. Right now, obviously reels um, are blowing up. You can repurpose reels from Instagram reels to Facebook reels to TikTok to YouTube, and now I think Twitter or X is even coming up with something. So that's what I would say is a very short, concise, 30 to second, uh, second videos recorded with your phone and posted on Instagram. That's probably the lowest hanging fruit. Now on, this, on the second side, it's like, hey, I'm growing too slow. I need to exponentially grow my audience faster. Anybody can do this. Just go to your Instagram account and hit that blue button that says boost. Hit that so bl- boosted posts actually 100%. help you find Followers and clients? A hundred, ten thousand percent. So something very easy right now, just boost it, spend five bucks for 10 days, five bucks for six days, see how it performs. What happens is if your content is good, the money that you're putting in will go a very long way. I had a video that I created that today has like 6,000 comments or something or 7,000 comments. Viral. I spent, yeah, <clears throat> crazy viral. I, I spent on that video maybe like 200 bucks or 150 bucks. And, and the thing is like that when things go viral, the algorithm pushes it even more. Mm. So it, you're basically are putting a little bit of gasoline in the fire and letting the fire grow. And then the fire has its own life if the content is good. So that's what I would say. If like somebody's trying to reach a new audience or grow their page, make sure that you do the market research and the content you're creating is good. And then just simply put a couple dollars behind it and see what happens. If it hits, double down on it. If it doesn't, no worries. Try again tomorrow. Right? So those two things. And then the last thing, and in my opinion, the most important one is sales. You cannot do this consistently at scale in a good way without making money. It's impossible. Most people, most of these influencers, I'm sure you know a lot of them are broke. Like they have a lot of followers, but they're broke. And the reason is because they don't know how to sell and what to sell, right? So now imagine if these influencers did the exact same approach I did. I know how to grow a bunch of followers on Instagram. I know how to market, but I know how to sell. Now let's pair up a product with these marketing, boom, you make money. So in business, if, it, if you're a business owner, typically you have your own product and service to sell. So now go sell. Make sure that you have a, the right sales systems that you can sell to the same audience that you're building in a profitable way. And then it creates a snowball effect that grows and compounds over time in a positive way. So that's what I like doing um, is making sure that you're growing your Instagram and your brand correctly, pairing it up with little simple marketing systems at the beginning, then we can get complex and fancy and whatever that get you a good end result and then go sell. And that right there, it's, I think the trifecta that just crushes like nothing I've seen and allows people to make, I mean, literally, if you have a good product and service selling it for a high ticket price, you can make 10, 20, $30,000 a month, almost overnight. 
just simply by creating one post per day for 21 days. Then after that, pre-selling your audience and that's it. It's like, it's a very, very simple process, which most people don't even realize, I think. Yeah, um, that is like that simple. So I love that you broke it down. Um, so basically to, to kind of um, package that all together, typically what he's saying is number one is doing the market research, knowing your target audience, who you're speaking to, pains, fears, desires, what's going on in their world. How can you solve that problem for them? Correct. Number two is creating the content strategy, which is being able to post content, top of awareness and add value to them. Let them know that you're the expert in that field, that what you're doing. And then not just posting it, because right now it's very hard to grow on Instagram organically. So you're saying hit the boost post button, yep. put some marketing knowledge into your content, your materials, start getting traction, being able to measure that data, making sure that you're getting to who you got to go to, um, which I'm actually going to start applying that. Yep. I love that tip. So this is money right here. <laughs> and then number three is... Um, being able to have a, a, a system to actually be able to monetize that audience because if you're right. putting money in, you got to get money out, right? A hundred percent. So having that, that sales system in place to be able to do that. And um, those were exceptional tips. Now, for somebody like myself, I actually, um, back in that time where um, follow, buying followers was, was something that was cool, I bought yeah. so many bought followers and I totally regret it on one side because now my, my reach is shit. And I'm getting very low engagement, but I, I'm past the point where my, my personal brand, my image, people trust me, they like me. I have a, a solid following, loyal people. Yeah. Um, but I want to be able to expand and reach a larger audience. But I feel like Instagram is penalizing me because I have those bots and those followers. So would you say the way to crack that code is by putting more money into marketing and then it'll kind of like naturally pick up itself? Or what would you say is the, the best approach to something like that? So it's, it's a great... That's a great question because I've had this issue myself. Like I've tried on my own brand, every single possible strategy you can think of, which obviously some of them didn't work like buying followers. And obviously today I'm penalized and regret it. But um, there's, there's two components to this. If you want to start a new brand from zero or a new account from zero, you're going to get rewarded and you're going to grow a lot quicker. Your reach is going to be a lot higher. And I'm seeing it myself because I launched a brand in Spanish. And they're reaching my, my brand in Spanish versus You're probably English. having so much fun building yeah. it because you actually see the traction. Correct. You're like, man, this stuff really works. Correct, exactly. So, <laughs> but on the flip side is at the same time, it's like the brand in English is so powerful, just like yours. It's, um, I don't need a lot of reach. And what I'm really playing is the long game, right? Yes, you know, the Instagram algorithm is penalizing you or whatever, but there's always ways that you can fix that. For example, doing podcasts, interviews, um, pushing more traffic, marketing dollars. Yes. To answer your question, hundred percent. Yes. The most important thing though, is making sure that you're making money every time you're putting dollars into the system. Right. That's right. by far the most right. important thing. Cause if not, you're going to, I mean, you're going to end up wasting a bunch of money for an asset that doesn't bring you anything apart from a bunch true, of likes. True. I, I want to, I actually want to take a step back and say like, I regret the part that I did buy a lot of bots and followers, but the brand that I built, now it's about like who's watching it. They know yeah. they're like, he knows how to market himself. He knows how to about social media, marketing, strategy, sales. So I do connect to very like-minded people and I have a very high conversion rate online, which yeah. you could talk about that exactly. later. <laughs> Indeed. But um, that's, yeah, how that, that's how we connected. That's how you closed me. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. But um, yeah, that's what I was thinking because right now I'm in that process where I'm building the podcast and I'm getting like experts that are really good at what they do and then just using that as a way to provide value to my audience so that way they begin to share it and then the, the community kind of starts growing on their own so that's super powerful and what would you say right now um, that you're seeing really top personal brands what are some of the strategies that they're using to really you know generate seven eight figures through social media because I've never made more than seven I, I've I'm, I'm at, a, at, a, at a cap I've made six figures on social I've never hit that seven figures on social so there's some things that I definitely got to tweak and improve on um, what are you seeing in in social media right now top personal brands because I know you work with a lot of them yeah um, that are actually um, what are they using what are they doing differently so one is they're posting more than once a day okay so that's like a very simple little thing, but like they're posting more than once a day, both on the feed and Instagram stories. So, and the reason why that is, is because the more people see you, the more people know you, the more people like you, the more they buy, right? No like and trust. So that's what I would say. Number one is posting more and posting relevant content, not just like some random, you know, hey, I'm here eating right, chi right, chipotle. Right. Like, like yeah. moving with a strategy. Correct, exactly. Moving, moving with a purpose and intention behind every single piece of content, thinking about what is in it for the viewer and the person watching this. 
So that's why I want to say number one. Number two is the marketing systems that they have. They're spending money on Facebook and Instagram ads, and they're spending money on Instagram shoutouts. So Instagram shoutouts is basically where you pay a bigger influencer or a bigger page to promote your brand, right? That is what I was actually the first person in my industry to do that. And that's where I made a lot of money, right? So it was, hey, you will go to this and stone, Millionaire Mentor, for example. I will pay him, I don't know, a thousand bucks. He will promote my brand and the followers from his page will come to my page. And then on my page, I need to have, and this is the third piece, have the right systems in place for sales wise. Because I'm spending a thousand bucks. I need to make sure that I make at least more than a thousand bucks from the people that he brings me over. Right. Right. Now, typically that happens is that because it's cold traffic, meaning people that didn't know you before that are following you now, then your content is what's going to warm them up and introduce them to your world. And that's the reason why we need to post more than once a day, because the more people see you, the shorter that time to become no like and trust, the shorter the time is, is, is had. Right. Now, at the end of it is having the right sales system. And what I mean by this is I see a lot of people trying to sell a very cheap product online. Mm. Right. So if you, I'm spending a thousand bucks on marketing and, but I only making 200 bucks on whatever it is that I'm selling, I better have a freaking backend system or big VC fund backing me or something. Cause I'm losing 800 bucks per transaction right now. So it's not going to work long-term unless you have, like I said, some backend systems. So the people that I see crushing it the most have a very unique offer, which typically is like mass market. Because that's what Instagram is. Mass market, usually ROI driven, meaning, hey, I'll teach you a skill that, I don't know, makes you more money. Or I teach you how to do Airbnb. Or I teach you how to flip houses on real estate. Or I teach you how to, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and some sort of something that's mass market, ideally ROI driven, doesn't have to be, but ideally ROI driven. And then having something for a high ticket, at least $2,000 to $3,000. And now to hit the seven figures, all you really need is one sale a day. That's it. So one, and I'll break down the numbers for you. One sale a day, a million dollars a year is like $2,700 a day ish, right? So all you need is one sale a day of $3,000. Um, and if your conversion rate is 25%, which we both know is somewhat low average, eh, right? You just need four appointments a day. So your number is four appointments per day, no matter what. Now, depending on how good you are, how good your content is, those appointments are gonna come easier or harder, right? So that's, that's the, the, the benchmark right there. So um, if you're not good and your content sucks, you're probably gonna have to talk to 100 people per day, 100 DMs or 100 conversations per day to get those four appointments a day. Mm. But I mean, if you think about it, I need to talk to 100 people, DMing, texting back and forth to make a million dollars a year. Shit, that's a, that's a good gig. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a very good gig. So that's, that's like how <laughs> I break the numbers down. And obviously the, the stronger the brand, the easier it is to do that. If you're the, let's say the influencer and the business owner posting the content and also closing the sale, your conversion rate is gonna be a lot higher because you have influencer power. When people jump on the call with you, they are like, oh my God, I cannot believe it's you, right? So um, there's a lot of like little things. Right now, for example, we're working with uh, Rich Dad, like Robert Kiyosaki. Sick, he yeah. came into the vault last year. Yeah, so uh, on the Spanish side, and uh, we're crushing it. Like first week, we already like, I think like $15,000 or something like that. And he has like 2,000 followers. In the Spanish market. In the Spanish market. I yeah. love that. So, and, and it was the same numbers I broke down for him. He's like, listen, I think you have at least, probably in the next 60 days, you're probably gonna do like 50 to $60,000. And this is the, the, the path that we're gonna follow. This is the framework. And these are the logical steps that we need to do every single day. And in this scenario, it's just four appointments a day. It's like, Four appointments a day equals four hours a day. You're working part-time to make a million dollars. Like, come on now. It's like, it's, and that's the reason why I think it's very doable for people to hit these numbers. So typically when I come in and I start working with a business owner, the first thing I look at is their audience. Like how much does the audience trust them? Like how strong is the brand? Because depending on how strong is the brand, it tells me how fast we can monetize it. If it's not that strong, then we need a, a Walmart period that's a little bit longer. If it's very, very strong, then we go immediately into selling. Um, but that's like the couple things I would say, like just making sure that you have posting more than once a day, solid content, they have the right marketing system, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and shout outs. And then obviously making sure the organic piece is good. And then sales system in the back end, selling a high ticket product to offset the, the cost of marketing and then make sure that you're profitable and knowing that you're building a digital real estate asset that it compounds and builds over time. Because if somebody follows you today, 
that person's not gonna buy today. That person's mm -hmm. gonna buy probably like in 21 days mm -hmm. or 30 days after they see your content every single day consistently. And that's why it's so important to be consistent, right? Now, on day 30, you made the sale from the thousand bucks you spent on marketing. But now what happens on day 31? and 32 and 33 and so on and so forth. And it compounds over time and your audience grows and it just it just creates a very uh, positive ripple, ripple effect. Like you said, snowball effect. I would say yeah. that um, that is very true. I've definitely experienced throughout like, the past four years of investing into my brand, social media marketing and strategy. Like just because you get a follower now doesn't mean they're gonna buy now, they might. There's been both cases. But <coughs> yep. over time, it's just like you're just like building and building and building that snowball until one time it's like, boom, there's a surplus. And that's what has really allowed me to excel working with Patrick. I'm the only person in the company who brought in $50,000 last month just in my social media and my personal brand. And it's because I've been implementing some of these things. Yep. And I've built a following over a long time. And people were asking me, how do you have your network? How are you doing this? I'm like, I've been investing into the game of social media and marketing over a long time. And now that I build loyalty, I build trust, I've been consistent, I'm reaping the fruits of that. Correct. And now it's like, how do we get that to the seven figure, eight figure, get the systems, put it up to the next level? Because that's a, a it's an asset at the end of the day mm -hmm. tony robbins talks about creating a, a raving fan culture right no matter um where i go in the world right right now i'm unrecruitable i'm with patrick and i believe in the mission everything he's doing but P tony robbins can come out with anything and he'll sell it because everybody believes in what he's doing and i really think that when you have a unique brand and you're true to the brand it's 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 impossible not to make money it's impossible not to create a community of people who love you and are willing to stand by you whether it's you know it's politics it's business it's um you know religion like humans are designed to be in a community and connected to each other and social media allows us that opportunity to build our own communities and um it's amazing that you shared that because i i, I see that part of getting to the next level it's like really starting to invest into the platform and having yeah. scalable systems in order to monetize and build a freaking cash flow machine out of that and why don't we talk about high ticket versus low ticket. Most people are like, $1,000 for my service, 2,000, <laughs> like who's gonna pay for that? They don't have money for that. Like let's talk about pros and cons. Like why is high ticket more profitable? Why say, well, or maybe low ticket is the way. Can you share a little bit about yeah. that? Because this man is, you know, in the ClickFunnels network, you've bought, you, you have this, the two comic club award, which means you're, you're constantly generating over seven figures online. You, you're connected with Russell Brunson and um, you are very, very good at what you do. So let's educate the people on the importance of going high ticket. What I would say is this, and I'll, before I start and I explain like the difference and all that stuff, for people who think they cannot sell something for a premium, they're wrong. And I'll give you a very simple example. Right now, there's water here, right? Um, and the water bottle, um, if we were to go to Walmart, how much will that water, be, water bottle be? Let's like, send a dollar yeah. probably, right? Cool. So now that same water bottle, we went to go and buy it right here in the airport. How much will that water bottle cost us? Minimum 50 bucks. Okay. So I like, went the other day, like <laughs> not 50 bucks, it was like $20. I'm like, are you serious? Really? Bro, it was crazy. Oh, wow. Okay. I did not expect that answer. Probably like five bucks, I would say, <laughs> in the airport. I like, I like the, the like Evian, so I got the big one. Okay. Got I it. was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, like the 12 ounce one, like the, the small one, it's probably like five bucks. Now you buy that same thing in the club or in Ultra here oh in Miami, that will probably be like $12, $15. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that changed in the water bottle was not the water bottle. It was not the quality of the water. Nothing changed of the water bottle itself. The only thing that changed was who it was sold to and what environment Ooh. it was sold on. That is it, mm -hmm. right? That is it. So it, to put it in this example, you can sell a fitness product, product to an 18 year old and you might get lucky if you sell it for $10. Now you might sell that same fitness program to a Fortune 500 CEO and you might sell that fitness program for 10,000, right? In terms of essence of what the program is, there might not be that much difference between the two. But the reality is that it doesn't, like the product itself, it's secondary. Who you sell to is always first. So to somebody who's like, oh, I don't know how to sell premium, I can't put the little whatever. Yes, you can, you're just selling to the wrong person. Now, pros and cons to selling high ticket and whatnot. So, I don't think there is a con of selling high ticket, honestly, um, apart from you making sure that you're good at what you do because you don't want to be you know, selling something for 3,000 and then you suck because then you're going to have chargebacks, unhappy clients, et cetera. 
But apart from that, if you actually care about the customer and you want to help and serve them and positively impact them, then you should 100% charge more because you're going to have a better quality client. They're going to take you more seriously. They're going to implement more whatever it is that you're selling and the results that they will have will be a lot higher. If you sell something for a cheap price, the chances of that person, let's say is a course, opening the damn course is minuscule, non-existing. The chance of them, that person actually taking you seriously is minuscule as well. Now, not saying that you shouldn't have low ticket. All I'm saying is at the beginning, you should not. And I learned this from the smartest, richest man in the world, Elon Musk, right? When he launched Tesla, he launched Tesla with the Tesla Roadster. He sold it, I think, for like $250,000. And his plan was like, I'm going to build and sell a very expensive car and then use the profits from this to build a less expensive car and use the profits from this to build a less expensive car, right? So he went backwards, most expensive to least expensive. And again, he sells something for low ticket, but he already built the brand and established the brand and the high ticket, you know? So for people that are starting, I would 100% suggest going the more premium approach. You're able to dedicate more time to it, more resources. You're able to invest more back into it. You're able to grow it faster. You can deploy more money on marketing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, versus trying to sell a little ticket because you're trying to get bottom of the barrel. And uh, a good friend of mine, Hermosi, says there's only two people that have competitive advantages in terms of price in the marketplace. One, the most expensive one, and then two, the cheapest one. And you probably are not going to want to be the, be the second. So that's, that's what I would say in terms of pros and cons and comparison between selling something for a premium or high ticket price versus selling something for a cheaper price. And also for a cheaper price, you need so much volume. It's crazy. Most people don't have millions of followers. So it's, it's, that's the reality too. So. Yeah, man, I totally agree. I think that high ticket is the way to go. And I run into a lot of people often that they are just like kind of uncomfortable or they don't see themselves making that kind of money. And at that point, I would say, man, take Jose's advice, <laughs> Josue's advice, because he's been doing this already for a couple of years. He works with some of the top clients and success leaves clues, right? It's, yeah. it's why, why kind of try and do things your own way, but find a better way of actually monetizing, building your audience, your company, your brand, and um, growing the company ultimately. Yeah, so I'll, I'll tell you a little story to expand on that. Um, in 2016, I told you the first client was $3,500 in September 13th. One month before that, I launched my first digital product. It was called IG Snap, and I sold it for a dollar. I had chargebacks for a dollar. No way. I'm not I didn't kidding. I think that was possible. Yeah, I me mean neither, until I experienced it. So, and, and, <laughs> and it's funny, because the reason was, and it wasn't even the product itself, because the product was like, hey, listen, like, I'm gonna teach you what I know about Instagram and Snapchat. And we sold it for a dollar. The reason why people, like the person did a chargeback was because PayPal processing fees, 37 cents. I'm not even kidding you. The person charged back because PayPal charged him 37 cents to process the transaction over a dollar. Yeah. I sold 400 copies, so we made like 400 bucks. Most amount of money I've ever made in my life by that point in that amount of time. Um, but it was crazy. I'm like, dude, like, it's like take your dollar. It's like, you're, you're just a punk. Like, what are you, like, you suck. Yeah. Right? So, and then a month later, I, the, the guy's like, okay, how much are you going to charge me for consulting? I'm like, the highest number I could ever think of in my life was 3,500. I just, 3,500. And like, done. I'm like, crap, I should have charged more. So, um, it just goes to show, and obviously, looking in hindsight, I can see what was happening. Somebody who pays you a low ticket amount, they're probably going to pay, pay in the ass. Somebody who pays you a premium, they're going to be a lot more. Obviously, there's a balance. You can't just like charge out of the wazoo, right. whatever you want. But there's a balance in terms of like what you should charge and stuff like that. For most product and services that are good, you can probably charge two thousand to three thousand dollars without batting an eye at all. Um, and it's it is what it is. It's like you're able to dedicate more, invest more, grow faster. Um, so it, it just that was just a simple story just to tell you. Yeah, like, the value is there 100. percent I would yeah. say like how many of us have bought courses for like 97, 37. I bought every single bucks, Kino body, and it's like yeah. the, the email registration is still there, yeah. and then it's just kind of walk through it. Yeah. It's like people when you don't pay, you're not gonna pay attention. Yeah. When you bought, don't value yeah. that, you're not gonna put the time into it. I bought every single Kino body program for 47 bucks and never opened it. <laughs> so it, it just goes to show, and probably a lot of people have done that too. Yeah, so it's. It is what it is. It's uh, people don't value what they don't pay. Right. And you as a business owner on the flip side of that, then you're like, okay, how can I make the million dollars, right? What is the easiest path for me to make the million dollars? Is it selling a Rolex or is it selling Casios? Probably a Rolex, yeah. right? You need to talk to less people, the better quality people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So 100%. it's, that's reality. 
you know? Yeah. Um, and the relationships that you build, that person probably refers you to somebody else, more clients, and it's just a more abundant, better mindset and environment to be in than trying to scrap the bottom of the barrel. Totally agree. And in terms of content strategy, what's the best approach or kind of, what do you do to build your brand? Do you have a day where you sit down, hey, I'm gonna sit here, record 20 videos, and then these 20 videos I'm gonna use for the next three weeks. This is my content for the month. Or do you take inspired action? Something comes up, hey, I gotta film this right now. What does the content creation process look like? Because that's something that I personally struggle with. Um, I have so many ideas, so many things I wanna share, and then I'll bounce into this and that, and then I don't end up creating exactly what I want. So what's the best way to structure your content the calendar and actually produce consistent content that's valuable, that's effective, that's getting results. How do you manage that? So I do it in blocks. Um, I found that if I try to like record one video a day, it just becomes a pain in the ass. Um, so I try to do blocks. So let's say, for example, on Saturdays, I will take two hours to record the entire content for the month. It takes you each, each video is 30 to 60 seconds long, so you can knock it out pretty quick. And then throughout the day, if I see something cool or whatever, I can just post it on Instagram stories like very casually and not have to think about it that much. So that's like how I structure the content in terms of blocks and how I do it. Um, it's just better just create everything one day. If you have a video editor, send it over to him. He gets it all edited, sends it back. You post it, you schedule it out, you set it, forget it, done. And then every now and then you just post the Instagram stories. That's what I do. That's great. And what would you say in terms of platform, stick to one in just the beginning and then expand or, yep. hey, let me do a YouTube short form content or just do Instagram reels. They're popular. They're catching fire quick, get some results and then expand. Yeah. So I would say focus on one <clears throat> platform first. Um, some people are prefer YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Just find the one that best find suits the you. One, correct. Find the one that you best suits you. Nine times out of 10 from what I found, Instagram has everything that people need as a business owner to make sales very quick, mm -hmm. right? So I would just say, go to Instagram. And it's, and I guess I might be biased, but I also believe YouTube is the end of the game. Like if you crack YouTube, it's game over. Right, right. That's like, okay, you're getting in social media, you're getting traction, doing good and you say, all right, now let me take on the next giant. If you Correct. can win at YouTube, then you win. all of them, because it repurposes everything. Correct. But, but YouTube is not a social media platform, it's a search engine. Ah, so that's, that's the true. reason. So, and, and it is also, the, I think, the reason why it's so hard to crack, because YouTube is not a social media, it's a search engine. But if you crack YouTube, you crack the mm. code. Um, but it's, it's a lot harder. So. Nine times out of 10, I would just say, start with Instagram. You can make sales pretty quickly. You can make 10, 20, $30,000 a month in the first 60 to 90 days. Um, it's not overly complicated, very simple. The videos take very little effort. Uh, you can go run, run some ads, marketing, sell high ticket, it, and it has the DM capability. Um, it has like everything built into one platform, yeah. uh, which is great. And it is why I love it so much. And then from there, if you build a YouTube channel tomorrow, you can just send your followers and traffic to, to YouTube. Definitely. So um, that's what I would recommend for somebody who's like starting from zero. I mean, you build all your connections on Instagram. Like you go to a conference, they don't ask you, what's your Facebook? Yeah. They ask you, what's your Instagram, yeah. right? Um, they don't ask you, what's your whatever can else. Can I subscribe to your YouTube channel? Yeah, exactly. It's like, they don't, they don't ask you, what's your YouTube channel on a conference? They ask you, what's your Instagram account? they DM you and they connect there and then you do business oh, that's later. That's the hub that like, yeah. then you start spreading and then it's like, oh wait, I saw on his IG, he has a YouTube channel and then right. they go there. So it's like the platform where you're sending tr that traffic to the website, to the funnel, to the link, to book mm -hmm. a call, to YouTube, podcast, like in IG is like the hub. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I've made probably all the millions <laughs> from, from Instagram, a hundred percent. It's, um, and it started for me, it started from, dude, I, I'm from the Dominican Republic. Nobody knew who I was. Yeah. I'm not a famous influencer. I'm not some hot chick, you know, out here in Miami that has a big booty. Like, <laughs> like I'm not. And, and I've been able to make a lot of money from Instagram without having those things. So you don't have to have these things that you see on Instagram flexing all the time. You can just be you, do it in a smart way that works and make money from it. Let me ask you a question. Do you have an OnlyFans account? No. <laughs> You're no, hoping I would say yes, but no. No. <laughs> no, I was just kidding, because bro, on social media, you're making money everywhere, yeah. right? So yeah. like, I see some chicks making money in OnlyFans, so yeah. I'm just making sure. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's like, here, here's something, like you don't need OnlyFans to make uh, money on social. 
So it's um, and uh, there is a lot of girls making money. That on was OnlyFans. a total joke, by no, the way. No, no, no. <laughs> There's a lot of money, like a lot of girls making money on OnlyFans. But the top one percent creators or whatever, they're they're making a buttload of money. That, that, again, scrap of the barrel. The other people are scrapping the barrel. Again, they're selling again, low ticket. They're they sell- wouldn't be making the money on OnlyFans if they didn't have IG. 100%. So that's the hub. A hundred percent. It's uh, they send the traffic from Instagram to everywhere else, um, and it's it's become the greatest social media platform of our generation because of the connections that you're able to build and um yeah 100 percent. and to, to connect with your audience um what are some best practices you know to really build a brand be social that's part of the game it's not like selling 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 how do you mix the two together is it just showing up authentically like so i would say always think about it what is in it for them right so we had let's just say uh we have a, a client who sells e-com out of here in the raw in miami and um, he has not, I mean, he's, he was getting like maybe like a thousand views a video. He has like 70,000 followers. He's like, oh, my followers are dead. And I'm like, okay, like, I don't know. Like, I generally didn't know. I'm like, okay, let's, let's test this out. All right, say this script. And then at the end, pitch. I'm like, bro, like the first video I posted in like six months, I'm going to pitch directly. Yeah, just go pitch. Like people want to buy from you. Like, believe it or not, people do want to buy. The main thing is the content needs to be valuable enough thinking about what is in it for them. justify making the decision. Correct. And then that video today has like 100,000 views, no ads, and like 800 leads have come from that one video. Wow, that's... that's Organically, 100%. Yeah. So, but the thing is that, and and like that, I have like numerous examples. The main thing of content is that people see content as like, oh, like I'm here in my garage, whatever, you know? But it's, the content itself is a means to an end. So if you think about it, what is in it for the other person with a good hook that catches people's attention, delivers a specific value on the 30 to 60 second video. And at the end of it, you might have a call to action that's, hey, book a call, comment, click link, whatever. Then from there, you're able to send the traffic anywhere you want. Um, There's also a little hidden thing that you can do where you can post content and then retarget everybody who has landed on your page as well. So you don't have to even pitch directly to, to your audience. You could do it in a, in a hidden method where it's like you're running ads from Facebook and Instagram to everybody who has followed you or engaged with you on your page throughout the entire history of your page. And then those people will see the ads pitching whatever that you're selling. So that's also like little, you know, expert secrets, expert as Russell secrets. Brunson would yeah, say. Yeah. Things that you can do to um, sell more without selling or feeling pitchy because people want to buy, but they don't like to to feel that they're being pushed a product down their throat all the time. That's that's what I found. Definitely, and you definitely don't make it seem like that. You actually yeah. add a ton of value, and you have a great personal brand, which I is the reason why I connected with yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, like you, you we connected from Instagram. Yeah, and yeah. then you closed me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're still not there yet. Yeah, I'll come at the end. Yeah, but um, so okay, let's talk a little bit more about um, more mindset, high performer, um, best practices. You're a CEO, you've got a busy schedule, you've got a lot of clients that you've got to deliver with excellence to. How do you manage your day-to-day schedule block? How do I not get lost in social media? How do I perform at the top, stay busy, high energy, high income, right? So, and I've had to, you know, learn as I go because I don't think I'm perfect. I don't think I'm perfect. Um, High energy has been something that I'm like trying to figure out, but something I'm doing today is every single time I wake up, I do 100 push-ups. It's like I wake up, I do the first thing I do a hundred pushups right then and there. And then at the end of the day, um, I do a hundred pushups again. That's like non negotiable, whether you go to the gym or not. It's like, that is a hundred to push-up. standard standard. And what happens is blood flow. So it's like you, when you're doing the pushups and, and right now it's taking me two sets. So two sets of 50, uh, before it was taking me like five sets or seven sets or whatever. Right. So you build up over time, but what happens is blood flow. And like when you when you're tired and you're like like this, you know, <laughs> you were just woken up, uh, <laughs> um, and you do push-ups, blood flow, and you wake up immediately, hmm. right? So that's uh, uh, something I found that has worked very well for me. And um, on my case, whenever I'm sitting down too long or whatever working, I have a standing desk. I just stand up, and uh, if I'm feeling like drowsy or whatever, push-ups again. So it's like that's I would say movement. It I've heard it a lot. Physiology. Physiology. That's where your that's where energy comes from, right? It's Correct. not you, you can people are like carbs, food. What do you do after Thanksgiving when you stuffed your freaking yeah, stomach like, with oh. oh so it's like really getting the body moving. Correct. So I love that. Exactly. So just movement um, <clears throat> helps a lot. Sun as well. So first thing in the morning, um, I live in front of the water, nice balcony, and like I just go out there, uh, take some sun and uh, then go in. So it just it just wakes you up naturally. 
um, in a very, very good way. And it's, I think also the reason why I feel like, like cranky when the, the sun is not out or like when it's like cloudy. It actually affects our mood. Yeah, 100%. In, in the Indiana, highest I suicide rate it. is in Portland, Oregon, and it's cloudy and overcast, I think like 80% of the year. Jeez. High suicide rate. Fun yeah. fact, but. Yeah. So there you go. So it's, it's I hated Indiana because of it. It's like it was it, in winter, which was like 60, 70% of the year. It was bad. It was it was cloudy. It was cold. It was it was like everybody was like this. Everybody was yeah. fat. So <laughs> so I didn't like it. But that's what I do um, in terms of energy. And obviously, like working out um, a couple times a week helps significantly. Eating correctly, I try to limit carbs or have tried limiting carbs as much as I can. Even though I love sweets, like you put me ice me cream. Yeah, yeah. It's I yeah I fiend on that. Um, that's like your drug quote unquote it's like that what gets that dopamine you're like oh fuck I want some more yeah yeah exactly but um, I try to limit sweets as much as possible I don't have them in the house I don't have sugar in the house um, I try to only have you know water <laughs> and coffee uh, for stimulants if you will and uh, just eggs bacon meat try to limit the carbs so um, it tip, and I feel it when you eat well you feel it mm. immediately because yeah. you don't feel drowsy mm. you don't feel like whatever and when you eat right you're also able to go most of the day without eating like for example right now it is uh, 1 p.m. or whatever and I have not eaten today like I have I'm not fasted right now too yeah but I have not, yeah <laughs> I'm not eating anything just drink water and I have not drank coffee or anything I just water alone fired up so um, it just it just helps um, and I typically go up until like 3 p.m. without eating um, anything. And I just feel great. So I love it, man. So how, how, how would you say you run your day to day? Typically four or five meetings a day. Mm. How many people on your team, if you don't mind, mind me asking? Right now we have 15 people. Oh, seriously? Okay. Yeah. We have 15 people and they're all overseas um, or most of them except my business partner. And um, the way we run things is very systematically. And whenever I don't do it like that, things break. What I mean by this is every day we have a daily huddle except Saturdays, because uh, we take Saturdays and Sundays off. So, um, you know, team members love it because <laughs> most companies don't do that. But we take Sunday, Saturdays and Sundays off um, for sales reps and closers and setters and stuff like that. If they want to hit their numbers and they have not hit the numbers, then they have the weekend to catch up. So that's on them and they have to hit it no matter what. Uh, but every single day we have a daily huddle where we review previous numbers, how many booked appointments we had, how many show-ups we have, how many closes, cash collected. And then we also uh, go over client uh, delivery. So any particular issues or clients that are whatever, things that we need to do right then and there. And then at the end, uh, we also end with wins. So we call out, hey, uh, so-and-so, um, I think you did great yesterday with XYZ. I just want to mention it and call it out. So... Um, every week, we also have a form that we fill out for the team member of the week. And then whoever wins a team member of the month gets a bonus um, as well. So we have like little gamify incentives to keep people pushing. Um, but the main thing for me is making sure that, that things are done in a daily, daily basis. And that comes all the way from the year. So I mean, like we have yearly goals, then we have quarterly, monthly, weekly, and then daily. And the daily feeds the weekly, the weekly feeds the monthly, monthly feeds the quarterly, and the quarterly feeds the yearly. And the structure, that, that structure, and it sounds so simple, um, but the structure I learned from one of my mentors, Alex Sharfin. Um, and it's funny because every single time I do what he says in terms of structure, how to lead the team, operations, I make money. And every single time I try to be fancy, I lose money. So it's, um, and it, it's uncomfortable, right? Cause like, you're like, I, I don't like meetings. I really, really dislike meetings. I mean, like I told you, I'm an introvert, believe it or not. I dislike meetings. I like chilling at home in front of my computer and watching movies on Netflix. That's what I enjoy. Um, and I do not like meetings, but at the same time, I also know if I don't have that 30 minute meeting in the morning, the entire day go south because we're online, like we're digitally, like no, I don't have an office, like nobody is coming into an office. There's no in-person, you know, thing. So um, if we do not have that every single day religiously, then things go south. And we also have every single week, a weekly, every single month, a monthly, every single quarter, a quarterly, and every single year, a yearly, a meeting that we create, then that plan that we're going to execute upon as a team. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I found. And it holds myself accountable because then I need, I have things to do and it's all public. Like nobody's doing a task that's hidden, right? Or black ops, right? Nobody's doing a black operation. Everybody has a, a board, which is public. All the tasks for the week are right there. 
every person has a responsibility and that task is tied up to what results and is public, right? So if you don't do what you're supposed to do and this guy does, they're gonna be like, why the heck are you on my team? You're a complete and total loser who procrastinates. If obviously you do that consistently and what's gonna end up happening, you're leaving. No, I, I don't even have to cut you off. Yeah. You they weed out. You weed out, you leave. Because winners win and winners want to be on a winning team, right? So that the, the, the people just, just get out of themselves because um, that's the culture. And it's, and it's simple because there's a public dashboard where I am on there myself, right? And I get, sometimes I get called out too. I sometimes don't, don't do the things that I'm supposed to do. I'm like, oh no, it's because I was traveling. I'm like, listen, you can have all the excuses in the world, but you are supposed to film that video and send it over to the editor so we can post it and use that as an ad. And because we don't have the ad, then we have less booked appointments. So ultimately it falls back on me and that was my fault, right? So I'm hold accountable as well through that system as the CEO, as the leader of the company. And if the leader is not doing his job, you cannot expect the team members to do it either. So um, that's what I found that has helped me significantly in how we lead the team in terms of meetings and stuff like that. And it also allows us to have a daily thermometer in terms of not only how the company's doing cash wise and ads and whatever, but also on how the clients are doing too, because we review wins. Oh, this client won and we show their testimonial and showcase it. And then like, okay, this client uh, hasn't checked in with us in X amount of time for whatever reason. I'm like, yo, call that guy, text that guy, do whatever you need to, to get hold of that and bring them back on board. Because typically when client ghosts, they might be on a cruise, but I don't know. You know, and I just don't, it just, you don't want to follow it to your chance. Correct. Exactly. So it's, it allows us to have a very good daily thermometer to make sure that things are moving forward in the right direction. So, um, the way we help business owners today on the marketing and sales side is very systematically, just like I told you, it's like very like numbers, 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 very just monotonous, if you will, cause it's not fancy, but it works. Yeah, you're very data driven. You come from an engineering yeah. background and based on your language, I could tell that you measure KPIs and you track all the data possible because at the end of the day, business is about numbers. So right. I really appreciate you sharing that with me because um, seeing how you run the team company, the culture, there's high performers in there and they're a replica of you know the standards that you're setting within the company. So it's always great to hear and I'm yeah. sure there's <laughs> other business owners that are watching this and then like getting some nuggets, getting some ideas on how they can increase their overall performance that's gonna you know be evident on the spreadsheet. Yeah. So amazing stuff, man. I want to ask you a few more questions before we wrap things up. Like yeah. what comes to my mind is where do you see Instagram going in terms of monetization and sales and marketing? Um, where do you think the platform's going to go? Where's the money going? Let's, let's talk about the future. So, I know the metaverse and all that stuff. I'm not really too into that. Yeah. But um, I mean, I don't know if it's worth ta touching base <laughs> on that, but like, let's talk about more like Instagram, the platform. Where do you see the future of marketing and selling? So, um, Instagram, I think, is going to have a tough time with Elon and X if they don't pivot, if they don't improve the product. So social media and like people have very little attention spams. Instagram has, I mean, has stayed alive for a very long time. So it's been 10 years. Facebook is still relevant today, but they know that X with Elon is going to be a big competitor. So I'm, I'm personally investing a lot of resources into, into Twitter, into growing it. Really? Yeah. So I started at the beginning of this year. First one, we did like $15,000. On X. On X, on Twitter. Back then it was Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. Um, I did like $15,000 and I have like 2,000 followers. Like, so I'm like, okay, this works. Like the same principles that I apply on Instagram work on X and Twitter. And they really work on any platform, which is great. Because I don't, I'm not defined and constrained by- It's a by, system. Yeah. It's a system. I'm not constrained by algorithm, for example. Yes, there's little intricacies and stuff like that. But the main, like 80%, 70% of the entire system and sales process works no matter what platform you go to. So um, the way I see Instagram going is it is going to be relevant because I don't think that people are going to be able to dethrone the, the Instagram story. Let's just say product is very, very hard to dethrone. DMs on Instagram are extremely relevant. I think that's going to continue. Right now, Instagram is rolling out different like little features like a broadcast channel. Like it's like a like group that you can you know, broadcast to people and stuff like that. So I do see Instagram improving their product and, and giving creators more tools to connect with their audience, which is great for business owners that allows us to have more tools to sell and serve people and impact people in the right way. But they're going to have a very tough time with X. That's my hunch because uh, you do not want to bet against Elon. And um, threads, even though 
I am extremely biased and I want threats to be and dethrone Twitter Absolutely. and crush it and have Elon, you know, fall into the dust because obviously I built everything on Instagram. That's what I want. Um, I do not think it's going to be a very easy thing for uh, Mark Zuckerberg to dethrone Musk. Yeah. Because um, threads, it went like this. Boop. Super high end users. It was like 100 million in the first day or something. It went. Mm. It just went way back down. So um, it's, I think it was a mistake. What they did with threads, creating in a separate platform rather than like incorporating it into this, the, the one that they have. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting, but I do believe that Twitter and X is going to be a very, very tough competitor uh, for Facebook and Instagram as a whole. So TikTok, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I rarely use TikTok and the traffic there is, is trash for the Got most it. part. Yeah. It's for, not, not all of it, but for the most part, it's, it's very like complainers and people that are not like super high quality clients. It's, you will have a million followers on TikTok and the traffic is there. It's like whatever. And you'll have $10,000, 10,000 followers on Instagram. And you'll make a million dollars on Instagram rather than TikTok. So that makes that's, sense. that's sort of fine. Okay. Um, and I would say, so let's talk future for Josue Peña. Where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Do you want to work completely remote? Do you want to have a headquarters? You want to be a lead machine? You want to invest into companies, real estate, M and A? <laughs> what is the entrepreneurial legacy kind of looking like? Where are you taking the company um, and its assets? And then I have one more question. Yeah, of course. So um, next ten years, I do see myself. We're going heavily into software. So that's right. You did tell me about that. Yeah. So it's called Drizio. I was now the one who built it, was my business partner. His name is Anthony Powell. He's been in the industry for like 25 years, has sold over $2 billion before sales funnels were cool. Impressive used, guy. Yeah. Um, so he built his entire platform and didn't push it to the market heavily. So what I'm coming in there to do is do push the exact, the product, yeah. Yeah, push the product. Exactly the same thing I've always done. Now, uh, so one thing will be software. We'll heavily into that. And then it has a component of payment processing as well. So it has a financial product, if you will. And that thing is, is a money making cash cow. It's insane the amount of money that is made in payment processing, even for people who are like sales rep or like closers for that. So that's like one side. And then on the flip side, I want to be able to create uh, an army, meaning an army of solid digital entrepreneurs and digital closers in a community that we can all make money together, right? So that's kind of the, the, the idea and do it not just in English, but in Spanish as well, because I do want to impact um, the Spanish community significantly because I do believe there's a lot of hardworking people that all they need is the right vehicle, right? So my experience, not, all, not all, everybody, you can't generalize, but a lot of Americans are just punks. Like they're just little bitches. Like that's the reality. Like they don't, they complain a lot. They want everything handed to them. They don't work hard. They, they, they are not like how they should be when you have the greatest country in the world. What it has, like, it's called the American dream for a reason, right? People literally risk their lives to, to come, come to this country to try to make it here. And you're complaining about whatever. And you're begging for money down the street when you're completely healthy and you're tr homeless. Dude, no. So um, that's, that's that, but I do want to impact the Spanish community significantly and give them the vehicle for them to be able to make a lot of money because they can. And social media, your phone has allowed us to do so. Um, so that's, that's what I want. Um, it's the software and payment processor component and then be able to create an army of digital entrepreneurs and digital closers that we help and serve. And we provide the vehicles and then we end up making money together because I do believe the best relationships is when people make money together and we both grow together, we all grow together. And that's ultimately what I would like to do. And that's the reason why uh, we have Digital Entrepreneur, the, the brand and the name of the company that we have rebranded and launched um, in both in English and Spanish. That's, we're doing the exact same thing. And the goal is to be able to have that. And let's just say tomorrow, I don't know, uh, a big Fortune 500 company comes in and says, writes a big check. Build to sell. Yeah, exactly. Build to sell. I don't know what we're going to sell because I, I do believe there's going to be a stupid amount of cash just growing around that we really don't have to have a, a tax event happen like that, right? Um, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, it's, um, I do, like, see, for example, Patrick, 
as a role model because I think in, in essence, that's what he did. Yeah. He built an army <clears throat> of people selling uh, insurance, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. And then he went on there and sold that thing. And uh, I was actually in, in Vegas with Patrick, the executive team. I actually won that opportunity through an innovative campaign. Um, nice. which he launches, which made me want to freaking crush the leaderboard, go out there and experience that. And um, the company is called PHP. But yep. what I didn't know was people helping people. Genius. 15,000 people in the MGM arena. Energetic, yep. excited, passionate, obsessed with America, with the values, principles, and the culture that he created. I had never been such a of an event that the energy was so high and people were just so obsessed with what they were doing. Yep. And that's what I learned. It's all about creating the company culture. That's what allows companies to explode and create a movement. Because essentially what he did is he created a movement with yep. that company. And I'll share this with you briefly as, as we wrap up. He sold that company, as you may know, to um, this company called Integrity. They do $10 billion a year annually and they're a bigger player in the insurance industry. The CEO of that company, Brian Adams, flew in just to speak at the PHP event. He was just in a meeting with Jamie Dimon for JP Morgan Chase. Just imagine the kind of caliber this guy is who's in his network. On stage, he was talking about having lunch with the CEO of um, Chick-fil-A, CEO of wow. FedEx. Very well connected. And Patrick is obviously connected to these kind of guys. So Patrick, to incentivize his army, everything is done on performance and you got to earn it. But the top earners there, they all spoke and hosted the event. It was a way of showing him that he built these leaders and they're ready to grow the company and expand the team and the yeah. size of it. So he gave equity to a lot of the people there. And when he sold PHP, it didn't roll over. But since Patrick strategic with everything that he does, he sold it to a guy who was obsessed with the culture that Patrick created. And he literally said, out of all the companies that I've managed, seen, worked, I've never seen a culture like the one Patrick but David has created the heart that you guys have for people, your work ethic, your passion, to, uh, your enthusiasm. I want to reward the top producers in this company. He called about 25 to 30 of the top producers in PHP. He gave them equity and integrity. Wow. Multimillionaires were, were, were made that day, uh, aside from them being you know, million dollar earners. And I was just like, man, to see a CEO of that caliber just cares so much about people. The company's called Integrity. And he had a partner in the NFL who, before that company blew up, asked the CEO, why did you name this company Integrity? You know that you're going to have to hold yourself accountable to the standard of that company. He's like, if it wasn't like that, I wouldn't have named it. He's mm. like, I want to partner with you. So just yeah. like all these synchronicities and just the way that everything got connected with PHP, with Patrick, with Integrity, it's because of the people. The people create the company through the culture, and that all comes down to the leader. So. Yep. It's great that you've been able to have success, duplicate the success, and now you're building something bigger that's going to be extremely valuable for the marketplace in our Latin American community, which is going to impact so many people's lives because, yeah, we have the freedom in America, but through social media and the digital space, we can transfer the knowledge, yep. the education, the skill sets, and teach them how to do that same thing. And you know, Latinos, they pick things up fast because we're not Maybe. afraid to work hard and be out there yep. under the sun as many hours it takes. We're not here to complain. Yep. We get things done and we're not going to get into the American people here, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so thrilled and excited for the projects that you're launching in Latin America, here in America. Um, I know you are coming to the vault, which is super yeah. exciting. So why don't we talk about how, <laughs> how, how, how I got you to the vault, which is part of the social selling and what you do. Yep. Can we talk about that experience? Yeah, for sure. So I bought uh, tickets to the vault. Um, I, I think it was like, I don't know, the, the $700 one, whatever that one. And uh, I just bought it, forgot about it. And then out of nowhere, I get this DM from this guy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Hey, uh, introducing yourself. Um, it was a very genuine DM because I, I, I've been in this space way too long. So I, I smell when somebody sends me a sleazy DM, I smell it. Like I just smell it, but like yours was like genuine, good. Um, I'm like, oh, okay. Like I, re I respect the follow up. It's like most companies and most people do not follow up with the leads, unless they're buyers. You did. I'm like, you hit me up and we just struck, struck a conversation, started talking. And then you're like, listen, like, um, what made you come to the vault? I'm like, ah, like network and this and that. Like, do you think you will get more value for your business and what you're doing if you were in the same room as Patrick in a private setting? And with these other CEOs that are worth 100, 200, 300 million. 
I'm like, God damn, that was good. <laughs> it's like, this is what I do. This is what I'm supposed to do and close him, not hit me. But, you know, it's, um, it, it's and you're right. It's, there's no question about it. And in my head, it's like, okay, logically, um, it just makes sense. Like, there is no emotion attached to it. It just makes sense. So I'm like, you know what? I'm willing to do it. Here's my credit card. That's it. And then it, what's, what's even funnier is that you didn't have the tickets. <laughs> it, it was like completely sold out. Like you, you managed, like you pulled it off. I'm like, damn, like this guy is, is a hustler. Like I respect the, the, the follow-up. I respect the grit. I respect the work. And I love um, seeing that. Like I really, really do. So I'm like, and now I'm excited to go to the wall. Like I'm, I'm excited like that we met here in person and we did this podcast as well because um, the whole point of it is relationships, Mm-hmm. matter more than absolutely anything the reason why i'm not dead like literally dead because i was suicidal in a very dark spot when the pandemic and gas station and all this stuff happened the only reason why that didn't happen is because of my relationships right they p- literally pulled me out of it right um and it is all about relationship business is about relationship making money is about relationship growing in life is about relationships and being able to have genuine people around you that you can grow with and that's that's what I believe, and um, and uh, I enjoyed, and and thank you so much for selling me, <laughs> man. I'm so lucky to be connected, and um, honestly, I'm super excited for those of you who are watching this. If you're not coming to the vault, get your ticket right now. I've been marketing it like crazy. I think I've exhausted my audience a little <laughs> bit, but hey. I, I saw you, I love what you're about, you're heart-centered, you're giving back to the Latin community, you're doing some pretty big things, you're an expert at what you do, definitely somebody that I wanna go deeper in with and I know we can provide a ton of value. So um, this is just the beginning of the relationship. I yep. appreciate you coming on, sharing your story, talking about your business, high performance strategy, sales, marketing, personal branding, all the things that business owners, CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs, we need right now to really make our biggest dreams come true, our wildest goals. It's by marketing, sales, communication. Yep. That's all we need right now. And you heard it from somebody who is doing it at a really high level and working with some of the top names in the industry right now. So I hope you found this video um, insightful and valuable for yourself, because if you did listen, we're not here to sell you something. Just like, comment, subscribe, share. Let's grow the community and do not forget to follow this man. (laughs) Where can they find you? So they can just find me on Instagram at Pena, P-E-N-A. They won't be able to spell my name is Josue. It's J-O-S-U-E. It's Ho and then Sue. Um, it's Joshua in Spanish. But on Instagram, it's just P-E-N-A. That's it. And then if they want to find YouTube, they want to see what we're about. Same thing, Josue Peña or Digital Entrepreneur. You can search it there. And I do believe that people, if they were to learn how to sell through social media, whether you're a business owner or you just want to make money online and you want to break and you want the right vehicle, becoming a digital closer is probably the best bet. So what we have right now is a free training that shows you exactly how to do it step by step. You can just go to digitalcloser.net, sign up right there. The video is on demand. You can watch it. You can implement it and um, go from there. So that's what I would say. Digitalcloser.net. I approve that, guys. (laughs) Phenomenal. Thank you so much. And um, looking forward to the vault, brother. Yes, sir.